Welcome back to the part two of this video. Today we are going to explain the rest of the past paper. And now we are going back to the sections four, which is interval. Intervals means the distance between two notes. Um, we will use number to represent the distance between two as a beginner. But now uh, we are going to add an adjective in front of the numbers to describe the distance and then the sound that create that between those two notes. So we will use major, minor to describe the interval of second, third, six, and seven. And we will use perfect, the word perfect to describe the interval of four and fifth and eighth. So let's take a look at the C major when you have um, C to D, which is an interval of a second. And since D is fine in the C major, so we will call it as a major seconds. And take a look as um, F in C major is the fourth note of C major, and we will call it as a perfect fourth. And based on the major scale, if we're gonna change to the second notes by adding just sharp of flats or double sharp or double flat, we will use adjectives like augmented or diminish. And then we'll show you the table and to show you the relationship between them. When we are getting, the distance is getting half step higher from major or perfect, we will use augmented. If it is a half step like smaller than a minor and a perfect interval, then we will use the word diminish. Okay, so now we're gonna start with um, the, go back to the past paper and we're gonna explain the question one by one. <clears throat> okay, now we are going for starting again from um, section four intervals. So first of all, I would like you to write down the notes, the letter that we have. The first one is E flat. And then the second note is an F. And we know that <clears throat> E flat to F is a second. So it could be a second. And if there are an octave higher, we have to add a seven. So two plus seven would get nine. So it could be an interval of nine and won't be a made, um, won't be a 10. So we can describe um, intervals that are larger than an octave in two ways. We can use add a word compound, an adjective, and a number, that small one octave, or add a seven to the numbers, just counting the distance by letters. Okay, so we got two plus seven, so we got nine for this question. And in E flat major, F is the second note, so it would be a major. So it's compound major, second. Next one, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. The first note is F sharp, the second note is B. So F sharp, G, A, B. So we have interval of four. And this is an octave higher, so we're gonna add a seven. So it would be 11. So it could be compound, adjective, fourth, or um, adjective, 11. So it won't be a fifth. So we're gonna eliminate the second choice. So in F sharp major, the fourth note is B. We don't have B sharp. So B is included in F sharp major. And there's interval four, so we use the quality perfect, and it's gonna be perfect 11. Next one, the notes we have here is C and a B flat. So C to B is an interval of seven, it is not an octave higher, so we stay with seven. And B is included in our C major scales, but not B flat. So if I go, this is half step lower than B, so it will become minor instead of major. So we'll have minor seven. Okay, next one. Um, this is a B and D. Oh, sorry, it's B and C. B major, we have C sharps. So B to C sharps, is a major second because B major contains five sharp F C G D A and C is included. And now we're going to B to C. So it's a minor. 
Next one is G sharp to B. Okay, since it's a G sharp, um, and we don't uh, have a G sharp, and I'll circle a fifth. I will say let's do G to make it easier. So if I have G to B, this is a major third, and now go from so G to B is a major third. If I change it to G sharp, so it gets smaller. One, two, three is one half that smaller. So we go from major third to minor third. Next one, E to G flat. E major, we have G sharp because E major contains four sharps. So E to G sharp is a major third. So E to G is a minor third. And then e, now we have G flat. So the distance will be the smaller. It's getting smaller for their interval. So we got diminish. Okay, the next question, we are writing the notes down. So um, let's find the bottom note. This is C flat. And the perfect fifth, so it has to be end on G. Okay, a fifth um, is easy and is perfect. So you're gonna just find it in your scales, the fifth note of the scales. Okay, so uh, you, if you add the flat to make it harder, so just think about it without the flat. So C major, the fifth note of C major is G. So if I add the flat under the C, I'll have to add a flat for the next note as well. And it's in the compound, so it has to be an octave higher, so we got G flat. Next one, augmented seven. Um, this is a C again, so we define the seventh note of the C major. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, so that would be, okay, that's a major. And have to make it bigger to, uh, to get the augmented, so we have to add the sharp to raise up in half step. So we have a B sharp here. And then minor 13, um, we have three flats B, E, A, and then the notes given is A flats. And 13, so what is the letter we're trying to find? So let's try to minor 7, and we got 6. So the sixth note of our A flat major. So we have A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F. So we're ending on F. Okay, so that's the F. So a flat to F is a major seven and have to get the distance even smaller. So we're gonna add the F to the F, uh, the flat to the F. So we're gonna add the F and make sure it's an octave higher. We get the flat here. So we got a minor seven. So A flat, that's a major seven. So that's a minor seven. Oh, it should be. This is a major sixth, and then we do. We add the flat on the F, so we got a minor sixth. Okay, next one, last one of the sections. This is a major third. The given note is B flat. Just find the third note of a B flat major scales, which is a D, and then you don't have to add an no divider. So ending on D. So to clarify, I know quite a lot of students is confused about the key signature. The key signature just give you the idea to determine uh, the notes that you have. And then after you find the notes, you're going to base on the bottom notes to determine the key. So we set the bottom note as the key of the scales and you find the quality and the numbers based on the second note that is given. Okay. Okay, now we are moving to the next part, the fifth section, which is chords. So 5.1, identify suitable chords for the two cadences in the following melody by writing either one, two, four, and five in each of the five boxes underneath the staffs. Okay, first of all, we have to know what are the Roman numerals that we're presenting. So the I means one, Double I is two, IV is four, V is five, okay? Which means um, we have to find uh, 
the melodies be on the first chord, second chord, the fourth chord, or fifth chord. So we have to know the key of this melody. So I will draw a table like this. So this is the F major. So I will write down the notes in all the chords. Chords are formed by three notes. And if we know the I, which means the first note number one, the first note of the scales, which is F. So, and then we're gonna skip up from each note. So F skipping up to A, A skip up to C. Now the two I, double I, which means two. So which is the second note of the scale, which is G. Skipping up is B flat. Make sure uh, F major contains B flat and D. The fourth is the fourth note of the scales is of F major is B flat. So B flat D F. The fifth one is C C E G. Okay, so we're gonna look at this measures, and then we contain F A C F A. So we have F A C in this measure. So this is I. We have G and E, so we got G and E, which is fifth. And then let's look at the next one. We have G, B, D, B flat, G, B flat, so two. G, E, C, C, E, G, so five. And F, C, A, F, which is I. So once you get the table done, you get the answer like instantly. Okay, next one. We're gonna take one box to name each cadences. Cadences. There are three types. We have perfect, imperfect, and plego. So it usually show the ending of the phrasing. The perfect shows complete to you. So it's just like five to one, dominant to one. Plego is four to one. And then imperfect is anything to five. Okay, so this is in D major, so I will draw a table in D major with four chords. So I, double I, I, V, and V7. So it's D major, make sure we have F sharp and C sharp. So we have D, F sharp, A. We got second notes of D, which is E, G, B. And then we have fourth notes, which is G, B, D, and A, C sharp, E. Okay, so now we're gonna look at this chord. We contain D, F sharp, and A. So this is fifth. And we have A, E, and C sharp. Oh, I'm sorry, so that should be... So we got D, F sharp, A, which is I. A, C sharp, and C sharp and A. So that will be a fifth. So we have A C sharp and D F sharp A. So this is one to five, one to five, and on dominant. So that's an imperfect cadence. Next one is C major. So C, I, 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 I double I, V seven. C major, first chord notes, um, the chord builds on the first note, C, E, G. Second one, D, F, A. The fourth one, F, A, C. And the fifth one, G, B, D. So let's look at the first chord. We have G, B, and D. So that's a fifth. And C, G, and E, C, E, G. So I, so five to one. So that's a perfect cadence. Give sounds like a complete of the sections. Okay, next one. We are going to... Um, Draw the, give a tick to the box to name each of the three chords. And this is the key of G major. Okay. Okay, 5.3, tick one box to name each of the three marked chords. And this is in key of G major. So I will write a table in G major, one, Okay, now we add inversions into our questions now. Okay, so we have A, B, C. So the A is mean root position. B means first inversion. 
and this is mean second inversions, which means how we're gonna rearrange the order of the chords. So when we have the um, A, which means the bottom notes, So let's fill in the table and then I will explain to you what is the inversions mean. So we have G, B, D, second notes A, C, E, fourth notes is C, E, G, and then the fifth note is D, F sharp, A. Okay, now so we have um, in the first chord, we got F sharp, A, and D, D, F sharp, A. So this is a fifth. Okay, now we have letters after the chords. So, the inversions means um, how we're gonna uh, arrange the chord, the chord notes. So, the inversions is determined at the bottom notes, the bottom notes of the chords. So you can see the bottom is F sharp. So it's the middle note, so that's an inversion. So for example, D major, the F sharp A. And then if I have changed it to F sharp A D, so now the bottom note is the middle note of the chord. So this is the first inversion. If I put the A of D major chord as the bottom, so that's called second inversion. So we are trying to rearrange the order of the chords. So this is 5B because F sharp is the bottom. Next one, we have A, C, E. A, C, E is two, okay? So let's see the inversions A. So two A, so that's a root position. And last one, C is G and then B. So we have G, B. So that's I chord and then the bottom is G. So one A, okay? So the next section is term, science and instrument. Uh, most knowledge in this section can be memorized. So the first one is just terms, so you just need to uh, memorize the meaning of the words of the Italians or Germans or the French. Now, the 6.2 is about the ornaments. We have a um, couple options. We have different types of ornaments. Okay, let me explain it one by one. So trill is a tonation or turnation between two notes keep shaking up for a long time. Upper morden is like this, so it's mostly three notes. Um, so we go from the principal note to go up and back. And akakatura is also like a grace note. So we have a slash in there and play those two notes at a real quick speed. Ta -da! And then Pachatura is like this, so there's no slash um, on the small notes. So it may be like this, I'm gonna put the uh, stem down. So we evenly spread out um, the value of these two notes. So we're gonna play them evenly. So da da. Okay, true akachura, pachatura, upper turn. Okay, upper turn, that's how it looks like. It's it's like the shape of this symbol. So we're gonna have like the principal note go up back to the principal notes and we go down and back. So da 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 da. So it's mostly like four notes or five notes in total. So the first one you can see really quick one and then there's a three note da da da. So go up and back. So that's upper more than the bottom is. So principal note go up, down to the principal note, down and come back. So da 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 da. So that's upper turn. Okay, then bottom is uh, instruments knowledge, and the first one the oboe used the double reed, which is yes. So true. Clarinet used the single reed. Oboe, clonge, and bassoon used the double reed. The xylophone produced sound of definite pitch. Yes, definite pitch means you can create different notes, okay? Not just a sound effects. The clarinet has a higher range than bassoon. Yes, true. The cello is the lowest instrument. Um, no, double bass, the answer would be. The flute might be played consort false. We don't have, we don't have mute for the flute. Okay, now we finally came to the last section, which is music and contents. So, um, study this music for flute and piano and answer the questions below. 
So you can see the top line, we contain the flute parts and then the bottom is the piano parts. Okay, 7.1, compare the following bars to bar 1 to the flute part and give a tick. So this question is trying to test you about the pitch, okay, so which octave um, they're starting for each melody. So we're going to draw three lines again. Middle C, uh, this is going to be bass C and middle C and treble C. Okay, so let's try with the first one. A, so this is a tenor clap. So it's starting above the middle C, so part A. This is starting below the middle C, so we'll put B under middle C. And this one's also going to start when, um, below. So B and C are at the same place, starting on the same place. How about the flute? The flute section is actually starting above the treble C. It's pretty high. So we're going to check each statement. Only A is run up. We've written two octaves uh, lower. No, it should be one octave. Only B and C correctly written two octaves lower. Yes. A, B, C are correctly written one octave lower. No. Only B and C are correctly written one octave lower. No. It's two octaves. Yeah, so the second one will be the answer. Okay, 7.2, we're going to circle true or false for each statement. A, the music should be performed playfully. So, look at the start. Let's go scan. Um, so, look at the start. It said allegro scherzando. Scando means playful joking. So, that should be true. All the notes in ball one should be played slightly separated. Okay, let's see. Um, Bar one, so we're talking about the sections. Okay, so we can see a slur there, and for the second and third beat, we have slur and staccato. Okay, so slur means connected, staccato means jumpy, right? And then so we have slur and staccato, which is slightly detached, but only for the second and the third beat, not the first beat. So that should be false, not the whole measure, only beat two and beat three. The next one, the highest note in the excerpt is an E. So we're gonna check. Is the E highest? Okay, where's the highest note? I think the highest note is gonna be, um, okay, so this one. Okay, on the piano part, so that's true. The first four notes in the left hand part of bar seven form part of the chromatic scale. So we're gonna first four notes set up of bar seven. So this one. So let's check the notes what they are. G, A, A sharp, B. Okay, so just G to E is not a um, chromatic. So because they're not moving half steps so fast. The flute play in the patrura in bar seven. Bar seven. Bar seven. Is that a partitura? No, that's the upper modern. So that's a false. Okay, next one. Which of the other instrument is best suited to play the flute part? So we find instrument that has a high range, high high register. So it should be flute, not gonna be oboe, a bit double bass, horn or tuba. How many times the supertonic notes in the key of C major appear in the flute? So supertonic means the second note, second note of the scale, which is we're looking for D, okay, in the flute part. So now we're gonna try how many Ds that you can find on the flute part. Let me change the color. So D, let's see, we have one D. It's two. That's it. Oh, one more. Three. So, I think we're going to have three. Next one. Complete the following two sentences by adding a number to each. The note in the flute part of bar four is worth how many demi semi quavers? So, bar four. Okay, this is a half note. We can also call it as a minimum. So one quarter note, what is a demi semi quaver? Which is a 30 second note. Yeah. Okay, so one quarter note equal two, 16, equal four, oh, equal two eighths, equal four sixteenths, 
and then we have a one two three four five six seven eight this is demi semi quaver which is 30 second notes so one quarter equal a 30 seconds so now we have a minimum so times two 16. next one there's an instruction to play suddenly quiet in bar so we're going to looking for the dynamics so here it is p supito supito means suddenly so that would be bar four okay so that would be bar four so now it's the end of the exam. So we finish the whole past paper. Okay, so now we finish the whole past paper and hopefully the explanation can really help you to understand the knowledge of the grade five exam theory. And good luck to your exam. Bye.